This is what I'm going to show you how to make in this video. So yeah, we're going to be talking about this like ethereal jungle style stuff, you know, very much influenced by Sewer Slot, Machine Girl, that style, taking elements of both and putting them together here. To go along this video, you can grab this full template, the Ableton files, samples, MIDI, and presets are all available at the top of the description on my website. Definitely don't miss out, this is a really solid template. I haven't seen anything else on the market like this for this style, so definitely go grab that. It'll help you immediately today, take your tracks to the next level. Thank you so much for the support, guys. Enjoy. I'm going to save him. Alright, so we're at 162 BPM, you know, a little bit slower for some drum and bass stuff. But it gives you that nice, like, 90s jungle kind of groove. And even more like some footwork vibes, too, at that speed. First thing we have is this pad. So this is playing two chords. We're playing B minor, and then we're playing E minor. So we're in the key of B minor in this track. So it's the root note and then the fourth, right? Pretty simple. But then these chords, where they get complex is the voices in between, obviously, because, okay, so you can see right here the bottom note on this chord. So we got a root note, our fifth, another root note, and then there's the minor third. So that's where this becomes a B minor, a fourth, another fifth, and then another root note and another minor third. So by throwing that fourth in the middle there, it kind of makes it a bit more jazzy. And that's a big key to these chords is the whole jazz and even like deep house and like, I guess again, just like 90s jungle UK vibes influence is just like the super jazzy chords. And then the second chord, same thing, because what's happening here is so we're doing a pretty basic E minor chord but hear how that extra note on top just adds like that extra sort of jazzy thing to it so that actually makes this a minor 9 chord technically not because we don't have the minor 7th in there but we're just gonna call it a minor 9 chord like come on so basically yeah and again these are just these very jazzy like kind of just deep sounding chords the other thing that's happening with this is this little melody it's very simple it's just like right just walking up like that but if you hear that happening over top of this two chord progression it walks up really really nicely and then again it just has to do with like what it is in the scale this note being the ninth in this chord but also being the fifth in this first chord you can just like you know it's very very melodic and very harmonic the way this is all fitting together now for the actual sound it's made with two layers so we have an operator pad obviously that's a lot of what you're hearing so what this is is it's four sine waves in operator you can see just all at different octaves Detuned a tiny bit too, and you're getting this like very like almost harsh, I want to say, digital sounding pad, right? But then what you do is you put it through a low pass filter, which has an LFO on it, so it's like constantly moving. And also there's an LFO on the volume of oscillator B. And the cool thing with that is you can kind of like create this morphing pad where it goes from very deep to very like bright and sharp and also that really deep sound goes well with the jazzy chords too you know it's not just the notes or just the sound it's the way that the texture of the sound goes together with the notes there's also just a bit of chorus on that and then on wavetable for the second layer so you can see it's just a square wave no pass filter with an LFO on it and then also a bunch of unison and then yeah it's just playing under that and then we've got a bit of reverb and then just a high pass filter 
Then we have the stab. So again, this is getting more to like that kind of more some machine girl types of sounds where it's like so what this is it's a stab you guys have heard this a million times it's this famous piano stab it's called the landlord stab right that's the sound and then what i'm doing here is it's just playing this simple thing which you can see fits well with the chords right where it's doing like that and then what's happening so we got a bunch of echo and reverb so it becomes super spacey and then i have a phaser after that actually and this isn't something you would, i would usually do but it goes really well with this because what you can do is you create this like big ethereal thing but it has like a kind of like movement and also it just sounds super cool and classic with the phaser on the echo and the reverb like that and yeah and then we just have a high pass filter then we have the bait So this bass is actually, it's in the same exact key as everything else, right? We're still in B minor, but we're actually kind of doing a different thing from what the chords were doing up there. So this is really like the progression. Like if we're going to talk about the chord progression of the track, this is really it, which in this case is B minor, E minor, and then G major. So root note, fourth, sixth. Actually, it's like a very techno kind of progression. But then just having like this and then those chords, again, that's more like just musical texture. Again, they don't have to be playing the same thing. But what you do want to do is if you're going to do this, that pad has to be, like I said, more so just like a background element. And then the bass always is going to be the one that's playing the actual progression. And all that we're doing here, this is kind of one of those implied progressions where these are actually just octaves of each other. You're not actually hearing any chords with this because, yeah, it's literally just like, all right, this is B. And then B an octave up. E, E an octave up. Like, it's all just that. But... Even up here, that's just G, even an octave higher. But because of where the notes are going musically, you can, like, again, it implies a progression. Now, for the actual sound on this one, it's made, so it's an 808. Like, one of these just big, fat, deep 808s. Which is how these have always been made, even in the 90s, it's like an 808 kick. And then you make the bass line out of that, because... This has all this movement, these like dum 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 dum, like all that kind of stuff happening. So the 808 goes really well with that because it's got that punch right at the start. And then we've just got a bit of overdrive, which is blended on there. It's really just like a layer, right? Because it's only at 20%. And yeah, so then we have the breakbeat. Alright, so this is um, trying to get that, that break beat like you hear in these tracks and maybe even get it a little bit cleaner and a little bit more modern sounding too. Like, you know, because when you hear these tracks, it's like, how are they getting like, it sounds like the 90s breaks, yes? But there's something to it a little bit more. And that's what I'm trying to do here. So the answer to that question is basically just kind of like, I think it's a little bit more specialized treatment of each layer than they would have been doing in the 90s. But 90% of what you're hearing here is the same exact stuff, right? Like, okay, for example, we have, so we have three breakbeats at the bottom, right? Two of them playing mostly through, and then one that just comes for a little fill. Right, so that already gives you that texture just because it is that. Like, it's the same things they were using back then. Like, one of these is from, if you guys have heard of the original jungle warfare cd it's like a rare sample cd this is from that right and even this like we have a snare programmed in there 
But see, it's pulling from one of these breaks. So it's like, what you're hearing here is 90% from the same sources as they were using back then. And that's a big part of it. So you gotta pull these from the right sources. And again, even like this snare. It's, a, it's just a snare chopped from a break that had a really good snare. And this kick here, what this is, this is one of my minimal kicks, which is really code for a 909 with a little bit of treatment. Right? So, like, even the kick, even though we probably don't want to pull the kick from a break beat because the kick needs to be nice and fat, and that's kind of the thing, is that these break beats don't tend to have very fat kicks. That's why you want to layer another one in. But even so, it's still, like, a classic sound. Like, it's not, like, some super over-processed modern kick. It's, like, something classic. And also, to make this kick, all you really have to do, like, what this sample is, is it's a 909, like I was saying, so we'll just grab a 909 kick. Right, like something like that. Which is like what you would get straight out of the drum machine. And then we can start processing a little bit with a layer here, so we're gonna make like this super hard drum bus. Also cut off that little thing at the end. And then just blend it in there. And obviously, you get different results with different samples. This was made with a very different sample from the one I was using there. But that's how you make this kind of kick. So, yeah, just a bunch of classic sounds here. And what you're going to want to start with is I started with this. So I actually started with this one break. Right? So you find a break that has a nice pattern to it, and then I chop that up a bit. You can see to kind of create my own groove, obviously make it my own, and then I filtered out the low end from that. Then I added this guy. Which I actually didn't even end up chopping. Because all it is, is it's just like the very bright highs. Like I chopped, I cut out all the low end and a lot of the mid range. But it, the rhythm of this sat really well over that other break. And they don't always have to perfectly match up too. Like that'll give you more of that classic old school sort of sound. If you have these kind of like grooving together, like it can't just be random. They have to be things where it actually sounds good when you hit play. But having the little like slight differences sounds good. Once you have those, then I did the little cutout here to kind of give it some variation. And then you can just grab another break, put a little chunk in there. And then the last step is where you go and you get the kick and snare. And you just follow the rhythm of how you chopped up your main break, and then just add a snare to double up the snare. Right? Like, it's not like I'm going to make a whole new pattern here. It's just adding a snare on the hits where I need that to be kind of backed up with something. And then same deal with the kick. And you can see it's not too many layers, you know? It's really only four things that you're hearing. And they're all in very specific places. Even the two breakbeats are two very, very different sounds that are going to fit together really well and not clash. And even this third one that plays at a different time from the other two, I still made sure it's a really, really different texture. So that when it cuts to that one breakbeat, you hear it. Because, like, if you grabbed another breakbeat for this third one, and it was, like, these ones where it's, like, very bright and sharp, well, then when you get to here, it would just sound like the ones that were playing a second ago are still playing. You wouldn't hear that this is, like, a different one. So you have to make sure it sounds different. And you could try to do that with processing all day, but, again, you can see there's really not any processing other than just a bit of filtering. That's kind of where the specialization of the layers comes in, too. Like, I was talking about, it's like, in the 90s, I don't think they were doing this kind of, like, very specific filtering to make these breaks fit together in this way, at least. And then, same deal, even, like, with the snare, just chopping that and having this, like, super hard 909 kick. So, you know, it's just, it's that same exact technique, it's the same sound sources, but it's just a modern feel to it and kind of using modern technology and modern understanding of how all the stuff works to make it something even stronger and more powerful. So that's going to be 
it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project file, samples, mini, presets. The entire template is available at the top of the description on my website. Definitely don't miss it, guys. This is something that you can do right now to make better tracks instantly. Link is at the top of the description. Thank you so much for the support, and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.